Okay, so we are Team Vector Space, now also known as the Perceptacons. Uh, so we are Alistair, Alessandro, Karina, Ginny, and myself, Tom. So two weeks ago, uh, when we started our final project, we tried to find a problem without a solution and make an attempt to solve it. After much searching, we found a problem. Low quality journalism has been running rampant on the internet for years. <laughs> Articles written to spread disinformation and reap ad revenue have become monumentally more prominent than legitimate, informative, and high quality journalism. Our obsession with fake news, cat pictures, and the Kardashians is destabilizing our society and threatening our very way of life. <laughs> I like the boo there. <laughs> So, we have a solution. Introducing the Perceptacon. <laughs> yeah, okay. It is a program that uses machine learning to determine an article's quality by looking at its headline. We built the learning algorithm from scratch. We created and deployed an API so that other developers can use the Perceptacon. And, thanks to our friends at sites such as BuzzFeed and Cosmopolitan, we had no shortage of terrible data <laughs> to feed yeah. to the Perceptron uh, for training. And finally, we built a single page app to demonstrate it. I'll now hand you over to Ginny, who will take you through a demo. All right. OK, so the basic premise is um, you paste the headline into the, API, into the uh, website. You press rate, and it will tell you whether or not it's a good headline. So, okay, so we go to a web page. Seems like a decent headline. Do I want to waste 20 minutes of my life reading that? Let's see if the Perceptacon can give an answer. So we paste it in, press rate. Sure enough, good headline. <laughs> now we'll go to an iffy website. Do I really want to take this quiz? Copy it. Paste it in. And as we predicted, dislike. Okay. So as Tom alluded to, there are two phases to a project, and hence there were two, we identified two levels of MVP. The first one was the technical challenge of creating a machine learning algorithm that can be trained to classify new data that it's never seen before. We decided to use pure Ruby. No, which meant that we were not going to use any libraries, no code written on the internet we could just you know, download and stuff into our project. Once we achieved that, we were hoping to apply our core problem of classifying good and bad articles to our Perceptron and finding a way to allow users to interface with our Perceptron through the internet. I'll pass it on to Alessandro. Okay, so uh, binary algorithm, uh, binary classifier, as you probably guess, is something that allows you to discriminate between two types of data. Let's call them good and bad. Um, so here we have an example. Uh, the first problem, of course, is to translate a string into properties that can be fed to the algorithm. So we decided to track some traits, uh, whether or not the first word is a pronoun, number of keywords, whether or not the first word is a number, number of key phrases, and number of key pronouns, say possessive pronouns or personal pronouns. We feed this input to the algorithm along with an expected classification. And in the meantime, the algorithm does its own prediction. And if they match, there's no learning to be done. And it's OK. Otherwise, if they don't match, uh, this is a 2D analogy. And you can see good data point on the left of the line, the black line is say the decision boundary and bad points on the right. If we feed a point that's been misclassified, the perception figures it out and adapts the decision boundary. So this is the gist of it. I'll let Karina. 
Hello. So before the Percepticon can actually do anything, it needs to learn. So we had a training process. In order to train it, we had to gather as many headlines as possible, good and bad. So what we did, we built a tiny program in Node.js, which scraped quite a few web pages. And as Tom mentioned, we used BuzzFeed, Cosmopolitan, Cracked, College Humor for the bad sources, and Reuters, Guardian, and The Telegraph for the good ones. Um, after we got all those headlines, about 6,000 of them, uh, we had to put them into our algorithm. But the algorithm doesn't work with strings. It works with objects. And we had to transform them into a hash. We used a parser. We created a tiny program in Ruby, which takes the headline and transforms it into a hash, which has a vector and an expectation. Zero Zero for good and uh, one for bad. Uh, that's about it. And I'm going to pass you to Jeannie now. An API is essentially the part of the server that returns the data response. Our API was built in Ruby on Rails. So the gist is um, it receives text input as a headline. It turns it into a series of vector coordinates and runs them through the perceptron to evaluate. It then returns the prediction as a JSON object. Uh, like uh, Karina said, zero for good, one for bad. Um, also, the great thing about our API is it's totally separated from the front end. So developers, any of you, feel free to feed as many headlines as you want. Uh, it's completely reusable with headlines. All right, so uh, I'm going to talk about our successes. We had quite a few. So we had fun. Uh, makers know it's a very important question. Are you having fun? And if you can't answer yes, then you have to change something. This is us being quite agile, as you can see. <laughs> Um, other successes, we had a cool point system, which were quite random, quite arbitrary. It's uh, on the left side is the before final project, uh, and then it's after final project was done. As you can see, everything just went haywire. Um, more serious successes, we reached our MVP on time, which was uh, Wednesday on the first week. Uh, we did uh, stand ups and retro, which is makers. Uh, uh, basics um, that help a lot with communication. Uh, we also did test-driven development, uh, pairing, and uh, used continuous integration. So far, all sounds great. We set out two MVPs. The first one, the technical challenge of creating our own machine learning algorithm that could be trained to make a prediction over new unseen data, and the feature MVP of creating an API that can receive a headline from, a new, from any new source and using our algorithm, create a prediction. So what was the problem? Well, on Monday of week two, we realized that we severely underestimated the implications of a concept called linear separability. In order for a decision boundary to be made between our data set, they couldn't be all mixed up in one, one clump. Now, we, that meant that one point that fell on the wrong side of the decision boundary within our data training data set would completely undermine the predicted prowess of our program. We only had two days left to find a solution. I'm going to leave it to Tom to explain what we did. Hello again. <laughs> so uh, we were able to find more data so that we could expand our data set that we use for training. With this additional data, we were able to identify more trends or metrics that we could use to classify bad headlines against good headlines. Some of the metrics mentioned earlier, such as the occurrence of numbers in particular positions within a single headline, were introduced as a response to this problem that we were having. Ultimately, with this expanded data set, we were able to overcome our struggle and improve our API so that it would return more accurate and meaningful results. So, uh, this project also served as an excellent learning experience for us. Uh, before the project, none of us had much of an understanding of machine learning uh, beyond its mentioning as the current tech trend, which I'm sure everyone has heard. So, however, now after two weeks of implementing machine learning from scratch, we have a considerably deeper understanding of the technology and an appreciation for how hellishly difficult it actually is to design and use. Uh, I feel that I speak for everyone on my team when I say that we've grown significantly as developers. I'd also like to mention that uh, this whole fake news problem is something that Facebook and Google have been dealing with for about two years now, I think. Uh, they've put a lot of money into it, a lot of in, uh, time and staff, uh, yet they haven't fixed it, but we did in two weeks. <laughs> uh, yeah. So basically just hire us, really. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so, yeah, you can check out the front end if you want. Go to that URL. If you're one of our developers, have a play with the API. Instructions are on the front end. And finally, we made the algorithm a gem. So play around with it if you want. Uh, it has 361 downloads as of now. Uh, we put it live two days ago. Yeah.